I don't think I would have ended up where I am uh, had I not attended the Military Academy at West Point. It was, a, it was a tremendous education, tremendous discipline, tremendous academics. I was born up at the top of Price Hill and we lived up above my uncle's house on the second and third floor. When I was about uh, four and a half, we moved out to uh, Del High Hills out by uh, St. Dominic's Church where I went to school and was educated by the good, uh, the good sisters from the College of Mount St. Joseph. And then following that, I went to Elder High School where I've remained a pretty loyal alumni. And then following that, I went to the Military Academy at West Point. West Point was really kind of a defining period in my life. Probably the biggest characteristic about West Point was the discipline. Learning to keep your mouth shut it was probably one of the best lessons. And the longer I stayed in the business world, the more important that lesson became. After four years at West Point, I attended Ranger School, and that was a pretty rigorous period of time. Well, I thought I was in pretty good shape when I went to Ranger School. I weighed about... Uh, 205 pounds, and nine weeks later, when I graduated, I weighed 155. After Ranger School then, I was assigned to Germany and was over there as a nuclear engineer. I had some electives in nuclear engineering, and I had a nuclear weapons unit over in southern Germany in a town called Bamberg outside of Nuremberg uh, near the Czech border. In Vietnam, I was a, a civil engineer building Highway 1. It was a blacktop road about 30 feet wide through the middle part of Vietnam. Yeah, I was fortunate to receive the uh, Bronze Star for my efforts over there while engaged in uh, Vietnam. When I was leaving the service, I gave them my notice that my four-year obligation was up. The most compelling offer came by the two-star general at Fort Knox. Schaefer, this is your last offer. He said, we'll send you to any medical school in the country. That's an offer that I came pretty close to accepting, and I had a really arm wrestle with Betty about that one, but as in most cases in our relationship, uh, she won and I came back to Cincinnati. I actually met Betty for the first time on my first girlfriend's front porch, but she was a Seton girl and I was an elder guy and we sort of got together after that. Betty and I got married uh, when I graduated from West Point and uh, three days later I had a report to Germany. Betty likes the color pink, and she's, this has been all her life. And if you go into George's house, you're gonna see a pool table with pink felt. Now, George is a gentleman to let that persist. And he's a gentleman looking after his lady, and I like that. I came to Fifth Third in July of 71, and it was really kind of a fluke. I had intended to work at the Zimmer Nuclear Power Station, which was just uh, coming out of the ground when I uh, came back from Vietnam and I had a job lined up down there, but then they had to fill out an environmental impact study, so they froze hiring. I'd applied to a couple of different banks, but I got a really nice offer from Fifth Third Bank. Of course, I had no financial education, no accounting background, no auditing background, no economics. But I was fortunate on the GI Bill to go to Xavier University at night and on Saturday and get a master's in business administration. When he went to Vietnam, he built roads and it connected people. And building roads to connect people was one of the things that he did in the bank. I think I was very fortunate to having spent a lot of time in many different areas of the bank. I didn't come up through a silo system. I, I, I had a pretty broad knowledge of what went on in the organization. Here's George Schaefer, Fifth Third President and CEO. George. Thank you, Johnny. The bank had been progressing under the previous two chief executives, Bill Rowe and Clem Banger, but George really accelerated that growth and by selling the bank services very actively and by making timely acquisitions, he was able to uh, take it from a small bank to one of the top 15 banks. My biggest challenge was, as Clem reminded me when I took over, was don't screw the place up. I was appointed the president at the end of 89 to take effect at the beginning of 1990, I believe. And from that point in time, we grew from about a $5 billion bank to a, about a $105 billion bank. He characterized being a banker as a form of guerrilla warfare where you're out there slugging it out with the other guys and, uh, and you, you do it by working hard and getting out into the community and working with your customers. 
I've always been involved in the community here. And whether it was running United Way campaigns or the Arts Wave campaigns, or whether it was as the uh, chair of the board at the University of Cincinnati or the board chair at the College of Mount St. Joseph, or just getting involved in Elder High School, but getting involved in the community was very important. I think Cincinnati is extremely fortunate to have the business community that it has here. I, d I don't think most people appreciate all the public companies that are headquartered here in Cincinnati, which allow this city to be a phenomenal place to live. I'm still on the board of Ashland Incorporated. I'm also on the board of Wellpoint Inc. Anthem. I'm still on the University of Cincinnati Health Systems Board. So those three business activities keep me pretty busy, but I do spend a lot of time with the grandchildren, spend a lot of time playing golf, and uh, I, I still do a lot of reading. I am very happy and very proud of, of my family, my wife and my three children and, and their spouses and my 10 grandchildren. I think I'm extremely fortunate to have a good, solid family life. The biggest thing that I try to impress on our employees at the bank and to my children and to the grandchildren is, is that you've got to work hard. You can have a lot of natural ability and a lot of talent, but you have to work hard at no matter what endeavors you intend to follow.